Hi friends, today we will discuss about cursors in SQL. So I sincerely request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. Oracle creates a memory area known as context area for processing an SQL statement. So we have a an area called context area which is useful for you to processing the SQL statements such as insert, update, delete, select all the statements. If you want to process there is an area called context area. This context area contains all the information required for processing the statement. So whatever the information required will be be provided in the context area. A cursor is a pointer to this context area. So in C programming language you have a pointer. What is a pointer? Pointer is a variable which store the address of another variable. So you have a context area that address will be stored in a pointer. That pointer we will call it as a cursor. PLSQL controls the context area through the cursor. A cursor holds the rows which are one or more written by a SQL statement. The set of rows the cursor hold is referred to as the active set. So what are the set of rows the cursor pointer is holding? That set of rows we will call it as a active set. There are two types of cursors. One is implicit cursor and another one is the explicit cursor. The implicit cursor is created by the PLSQL or I can say Oracle. So implicit cursors are automatically created by the Oracle whenever an SQL statement is executed. Whereas explicit cursors has to be defined by the user or the programmer. We have to open the explicit cursor and then we have to fetch the information and then we have to close the cursor. So we have two types of cursors one is implicit cursor and another one is explicit cursor. Implicit cursor will be created by the oracle whereas explicit cursor will be created by the programmer. As I said earlier, implicit cursors are automatically created by oracle whenever an SQL statement is executed. Especially I can say whenever you are executing the data modification long way statements like insert, update, delete then in implicit cursor is associated with this statement. For insert operations, the cursor holds the data that needs to be inserted. Whenever you are inserting any tuple or any row, then cursor holds that information. For update and delete information, the cursor identifies the number of rows that were affected. Whenever you are updating any row, then how many rows actually have been updated or whenever you are deleting the tuple how many rows are actually affected will be stored in the cursor. Now we have various attributes like found, not found, is open, row count. What is this attributes? What is the purpose of that one? Let me discuss it for you. The found attribute returns a boolean value which is either true or false. When it will return a true? If an insert update or delete statement meaning is that the DML statements affects one or more rows or a select into statement returned one or row more rows otherwise it returns a false meaning is that either insert update or delete statement does not affect any rows or the select into statement does not return any number of rows then it will return false otherwise it will return true. The not found attribute is a complement to the found attribute. It returns false if an insert, update or delete statements affected one or more rows or select into statement return one or more rows. Otherwise it returns true. So I can say it is a complement to the found attribute. Is open attribute always return false for implicit cursor. We have discussed that we have two types of cursors. One is implicit cursor and another one is explicit cursor. Implicit cursors will be created by the SQL 
itself whereas explicit cursor the programmer has to define them so as the implicit cursor will closes the sql cursor automatically after executing its associated sql statement so always the is open attribute return falls for the implicit cursor the row count attribute returns the number of rows affected by a dml statements which is insert update or delete statement or return by a select into statement so the row count attributes exactly find how many rows these statements are affected now let me discuss a simple program to discuss about the implicit cursor so to do that one i will open the sql plus and i will write the declare section so i will write declare and then i will declare a variable called rows and the data type of it is number and of size 2 and then i will write the begin section and then i will write a statement called update emp set salary is equal to salary plus 50 where department number is equal to 30 then i will write here if sql percentage not found i want to use the attribute called not found then i will write dbms underscore output dot put underscore line then i will display here as within single attributes no employees are selected or updated whatever i want to display i want to display oh here if then then here i need to write el s i f and then i will write sql percentage found attribute i want to use then i will write then and now i want to find how many rows are actually affected then i will write rows assignment operator sql percentage i will use an attribute called row count and then i will display dbms underscore output dot put underscore line and then i will display the rows using the concatenation and then i will write employees salaries are updated means these many employee salaries are updated i want to display then i want to close the end if and then i need to close the end and then i will write now you can see four employees salaries are affected or updated you want to find how many employees are there with department number 30 then i can write select star from emp where department number is equal to 30 there are four employees are there you can see 7521 7654 7844 7900 if you want to display their names you can write select e name from emp where department number is equal to 30 now you can see four employees are there which is ward martin turner james their salaries are only updated so that's why you got that the number of rows as four so four employee salaries are updated now i have opened this program whatever the plsql program i have written in the notepad you can see i have used the declare statement then i have declared a variable called rows so rows is a variable and uh, the data type i have provided as number and the size is 2 and then i have written the begin statement and i said whenever you are using the dml statements such as insert update and then delete then the implicit cursor which is sql cursor will be automatically created by the oracle so that's why here i am using the update statement which is one of the statement in the dml statement so i have written update the table name is emp set what values i want to update i want to update the salary by 50 so i have written sal sal is equal to sal plus 50 where sal is one of the attribute in the emp table 
to whose salaries I want to increment by 50. The employees who are working in the department number 30 only need to be affected. So that's why I have written a wear clause as department number is equal to 30. Then is there any employees who are working in the department 30 or not? I am verifying. Suppose let's take that I have given a department number called 100 or 1000 whatever it is. Then there are no employees in the department number 1000. Then none of the rows will be affected. In that case this not found will return true. Am I right? Then the statements which are there in this if block will be executed. Whereas the SQL found will return true whenever there are any rows are affected in the update statement. So if it is not affected then the statements which are there in the if block will be executed. If the rows are affected the statements which are there in this else if block will be executed. So I have written that the number of rows is equal to SQL percentage row count. Already I told you that there is an attribute called row count. It will count the number of rows are affected. Affected. How many rows are affected in our earlier example 4 rows. So that value will be stored in the variable called rows and that I am displaying here as an output. Now let me save this program and close it. I have given the department number as 1000. Now you can see no employees are selected because there are no employees who are working in the department number called 1000. If you want to verify let me write here select a star from EMP where department number is equal to 1000 end with semicolon. No rows are selected. So in the update statement zero number of rows are affected. If zero number of rows are affected affected then this not found attribute will return the true if the if block the condition is true the statements which are there in the if block will be executed that's why you got output as no rows are or no employees are selected if there is a, a department number called thousand and some employees are there then the how many rows are affected in that case this found will return true then the statements which are there in this else if statement will be executed whatever the statement we have written here where the department number is equal to 30 will be executed now what I will do here is that in place of 30 I will write 20 let me open and we can see what will happen now let me run the program now you can see two employee salaries are updated if you want to verify you can write select e name from EMP where department number is equal to 20 and with semicolon. There are two employees called Jagadish and Adams. Their salaries are only updated. So that's why this found attribute has written the true in the implicit cursor called SQL. Then the statements which are there in this else if has been executed. The row count will give the attribute value how many rows are affected the two rows are affected so the rows attribute will have the value to that i have displayed as an output so i hope you have understood about the implicit cursor called sql which was created by the oracle whenever you are executing the dml statements like insert update and then delete statements now let me discuss about the explicit cursors in detail explicit cursors are programmers defined cursors means the programmer who are writing the pls tool program will define this explicit cursor for gaining the control over the context area already i told you that we will have a context area a cursor is a pointer pointing to that context area so if you want to gain the control over the context area the programmer can define the explicit cursor an explicit cursor should be defined in the declare section of the PLSQL block so normally if you want to define a variable we will define in the declare statement similarly whenever you want to define an explicit cursor you need to define inside the declare section only now let me discuss the steps involved in explicit cursors the first step is we need to declare the explicit cursor, then we need to open the cursor, we need to fetch the cursor to retrieve the data and finally we need to close the explicit cursor. So first thing is that we need to declare the cursor and then we need to open the cursor and third one is we need to fetch the cursor 
to retrieve the information from the data or I can say we need to fetch the cursor to retrieving the data and finally we need to close the cursor. Declaring the cursor defines the cursor with a name. Normally whenever we define a variable, we will give the variable name right. Similarly whenever you are declaring the cursor, you need to provide the name of the cursor and associated select statement. The syntax is you need to provide cursor, cursor name, whatever the name you want to provide and then you can write is select what are the attributes you want to give or what are the columns you want to provide, you can provide and what is the table name you have to provide. So this is the generalized syntax to declare the explicit cursor. So that the explicit cursor whenever you are declaring you have to define the name and associated select statement. Opening the cursor allocates the memory for the cursor and makes it ready for fetching the rows returned by the SQL statement on it. The generalized syntax to open the cursor is you need to provide open and then you need to provide the cursor name. So opening the cursor allocates the memory because cursor is a pointer pointing to the context area. So pointer is also a variable which stores the address of another variable. So whenever you are opening the cursor then the memory will be allocated and it is ready to fetch the rows returned by the select statement. Fetching the cursor involves accessing one row at a time. The syntax for fetching the cursor is you need to provide the fetch cursor name into various columns and with the semicolon. So you need to write fetch cursor name into column 1 or I can say attribute 1, attribute 2, attribute 3, so on and with the semicolon. So this is the syntax to fetch the explicit cursor. So whenever you are fetching the cursor, it is useful for you to access one row at a time. Let's take that in the context area, if you have 10 rows, using the explicit cursor, you can fetch one row at a time. So if you want to fetch 10 rows, then you need to provide this fetching instruction inside the loop. Closing the cursor meaning is that you are releasing the memory which has been allocated during the opening of the cursor. Already I told you that whenever you are opening the cursor memory will be allocated and when you are closing the cursor the memory will be released. The syntax to close the cursor is you need to provide close and then you need to provide the cursor name end with the semicolon. Now let me discuss a simple program in PLSQL to discuss much about the explicit cursors. So I will open the Oracle SQL plus let me clear the screen and I will write set server output on end with the semicolon. By this time I hope you know what is the purpose of this set server output on. Whatever the PLSQL program you have written, in that one if you write some display statement and that statement should be displayed as an output, then you need to write this set server output on. If it does not write this statement, then whatever the output the PLSQL program should display, it will not display. As I said earlier, whenever you are using the explicit cursors, you need to declare the cursor, you need to open the cursor, you need to fetch the cursor and you need to close the cursor. And again I told you one more important point. You need to declare the cursor in the declare section. So I need to declare a cursor. So I will write declare and then I will declare few attributes called let me write id and then I will write emp dot. emp is the table. So I will write table dot table in that one I want to give an attribute called EMP number and then I will provide the type because whatever the data type which is provided for the EMP number in the EMP table I does not know right. If I want to use the same data type for my variable called id then I can provide like this emp is the table name, emp number is the attribute name and then I am providing the percentage type. Similarly I will write name 
then I will write EMP number and then E name is a attribute name and then I will provide the percentage type and with the semicolon then I will give salary is my attribute va variable name and EMP is my table name SAL is my attribute name and type percentage and then I will write cursor how to open a cursor you need to provide cursor cursor name let me give it a c1 is select i need to write and then i need to write the attributes one is emp number e name comma sal from which table emp table and then i will write the begin section and then I need to open the cursor. So how can I open the cursor? I need to write open and then cursor name end with the semicolon. Then I will use the loop. Inside the loop, I will use the fetch statement to fetch the information or one row at a time. Okay, so I will write fetch cursor name is C1 into in which variables I want to store. One is ID and another one is name, another one is salary. And then let me end with the semicolon. So the syntax for the fetch statement is fetch cursor name into attribute 1, attribute 2, attribute 3, so on, end with semicolon. Then I will write exit. And when I want to exit this one, whenever the cursor is not found. So I will write C1 percentage. I will use an attribute called not found end with the semicolon. So all the rows will be fetched one after other and it should be displayed. So I will write DBMS underscore output dot put underscore line and then I will display ID concatenation and I will provide the space within single quotes and again concatenation ID then I will use the name concatenation and then I will give the space and then concatenation and then I will display the salary end with semicolon and then I want to end the loop and I finally I want to close the cursor the syntax is use the close and then cursor name end with the semicolon then I want to end it and then end with a semicolon. Now you can see these are the information which is there in the EMP table and EMP number, E name, comma salary have been displayed. Now let me discuss this one in Notepad. Let me discuss this one. So I have declared three variables. So one is ID, name and salary. How we can declare a variable? We can declare a variable in the declare section. And you know that any variable you need to provide the data type and then you need to provide end with semicolon. Now, whatever the data type is there for the particular attribute in the table, the same data type I want to use. So that's why I have written the variable name table dot attribute percentage type in the EMP table for the attribute attribute called EMP number what data type is there the same data type will be assigned to the variable called ID similarly for the name and also for the salary then I have defined a cursor called C1 so how to define cursor C1 is select EMP number E name comma salary from the EMP table then I have written the begin statement and then I have opened the cursor so this is to open the cursor called C1 so this statement is useful for you to open the cursor and this statement is used to define the cursor or I can write define and then I have written the loop statement as I said earlier the fetch statement is used to retrieve one row from the context area but here how many rows are there how many rows are there in the EMP table those many rows will be there in the context area but using the fetch statement I can retrieve one row at a time so I have written the fetch statement inside the loop and this loop till we run till the rows are there whenever there are no rows then not found will return the true then it will come out now you can see 
dbms underscore output dot put underscore line for each row I am displaying the id name and salary and then finally I am ending the loop I am closing the loop and end with the semicolon let me close this one if you want to retrieve the information from the table called EMP the EMP number E name comma SAL from EMP I will write the oracle statements now you can see eight rows are selected here how many rows are selected here nine thousand seven three six nine seven five two one seven six five four four and then seven eight double four seven eight seven six seven nine double zero seven nine three four so four plus four eight rows are selected even when I have written the SQL statement also we got the 8 rows so the same information I have displayed using the PLSQL using the explicit cursor and same we already know how to do using the select statement I hope you have understood about the implicit cursor and explicit cursor if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day